Yada da 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 da. Hey, we're on the podcast morning on the podcast morning and we on the podcast all the time. People I hate revisited all the updates and siblings. All this and more <laughs> on today's brilliant observations. Do 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 do. Is it the siblings that set you yeah, off? Yeah, my favorite. My favorite is it like, is this a choice we get to make? Or <laughs> I didn't really think that that was up to us. Good morning, Melissa. Wait till that segment. It'll be up to you. Good morning, Amy. Oh, what's up, my sweet, it? fine, feathered how friend? Goes it? How goes it? We had a tornado come through, and it missed us. Yay! And what was so odd to me? Tell me, is that? All of the little childrens of our fair land decided to get equally frightened about the tornado. And I wonder why this is, because we've had them before, gang. Uh, I guess there was just enough warning, and the schools were involved in having some warning in the local television station. I mean, a couple of days saying, this is going to come to our area. It's severe weather. Tornadoes are expected. So then when the thing came and it did the watch, you know, a tornado watch is the one that I always get my head twisted around because a tornado warning, you would think, it would could be the come. more urgent. No, it could come. It's, You're warned. In fact, it's not. Yeah, the right. watch means it's here. So look out, be on the lookout for it's a bolo for the tornado. So anyway, so the kids, everybody's post, my kids were, you know, friend X is already in the basement and friend Y is in a closet with a lacrosse helmet on and friend Z is, you know, over and worried and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, maybe this room's got a lot of windows, I guess. Come downstairs. Like, I I had a lot of other things. It was a very, very hectic week as weeks go. But when the tornado came, I was kind of impressed with all these kids and their proactive terror. And then I was really disappointed in myself for being like, you guys are fine. And then as soon as the weather lifted, I had somewhere to be. So I got in the car and drove. And the kids were shitting their pants. And I was telling them, guys, it's over. It really is over. I proved to you it's over. And they're like checking the NOAA weather maps. And they're like, it's not over. Do you know why they're worried? Because they have information. If you say they're adults, I'm going to kick you. Do you know why the they're head. worried? I will kick you. You must have long legs. Um, they are worried because oh. A, they have information. But B, you're leaving the house. They don't know where you're going. And they're confident you don't have enough gas in your car to get there. So you're going to be on the roadside yesterday. as a tour fucking NATO <laughs> scoops you up and takes you to somebody else's house to not make sourdough bread and to get your ear checked and to get new cute glasses and to do all the crazy things you do. They don't want you being somebody else's mom. So the moral of this story is get gas, Alice. Get okay. gas in your car. I, I understand. But also, see also, it was over. They just weren't convinced that it wasn't over. And so I even waited and I said, well, if it's the eye of the storm, something more is coming. But the whole thing, it was it was a very fluid situation. And it moved from having us as a direct hit to completely bypassing us and having us get a lot of rain and some scary windies. And I had that level of information six hours before the target time. So I think maybe the preparation of we're going to cancel your sports practices and we're going to make sure that everybody gets out exactly on time and here's the protocol if it happens to rain earlier. Like they had just prepped all the kids so that they wouldn't find themselves in a situation where things went south. And it ended up being incredibly unlikely that that would even happen. And in fact, it did not happen at all. So it's very different than I hear the train a coming, which we've been hit our house directly. And one of my kids was in his room asleep when the tree fell through his closet in his room. So he's allowed to sit in the closet in my room, which has no windows. It's on the first floor. It's very safe. Brick house. We got a brick. How she's mighty mighty letting it all hang out speaking of not Cedric the entertainer at all but my brain jumped about eight synapses to get there have you ever seen these things that are called something that I don't know where you hire a celebrity and they give cameo. you a personal message cameo oh, yeah sure seen him my friend got Cedric the entertainer to give his her parents a 50th anniversary message why Cedric the entertainer I don't know. I guess they know him. Meaning they've they love watched, him. Think he's think he's funny. I don't know. I guess. I, who would you get? Eric Stoltz. 
Hi, hi, Melissa. I'm, I'm really just happy sorry. being on his I'm really Twitter sorry. account. I'm really sorry that you're still married, but since I can't change it, happy anniversary. You don't have to change it. <laughs> ah, ew! <laughs> you don't have cheater. to change it. You're a cheater. Anyway, by way of saying, I want to hire a cameo. Are they hard to do? Should I just type no, the it word could cameo be like, into any electronic device? Yes. And someone will ask me for a credit card? It could okay. be 20 bucks. It could be 30 bucks. If it's actually a good celebrity and not Cedric the Entertainer, it could be 150 bucks for like a 30 second, one minute. I don't know how long the messages are. Okay. The first way I heard about this was on Howard Stern when those oh. idiots would get paid money to talk to people like... Like high pitch Eric, who who the, the, who the fuck pack? wants yeah who the fuck wants a message from high pitch Eric? Well, that's his entire form of uh, salary these days. I mean, he's <laughs> collecting on the the government on your, on your W two. It says dope recordings. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, he's collecting from the government teat, but in addition to oh. that, he makes his side money by saying hi. Everybody, I just wanted to say I heard that you're going into surgery tomorrow, and like he just makes those messages Ew. for people. Yeah. Okay, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, but if stuff. you wanted George Clooney to do it, that's like a two hundred dollar message. But- well, our good, our good friend, and God rest his soul, and I'm still having PTSD flashbacks from uh, we lost a friend to COVID, not just one, but a particularly close friend, and twice he had Rocky messages because they evidently when you're in Philadelphia they give you like a code Rocky when you're when you get out through yeah. or something so he got two from Sylvester Stallone of those messages and the whole time and he got he got a couple from like the head coach of the Eagles and all this stuff and I just thought it was because he's kind of connected and it might have been but the Rocky one now I'm, I'm kind of wising up that somebody probably wrote a check so I want to do one of those for my people I think they would be fun who would you get a, who would you you I made a joke about Eric Stoltz do you even care about a cameo or would it be nah. like a cute giggle i don't care anymore i'm over I feel like i feel like everybody but i feel like everybody would care if the right person was tapped all right the that's real fair. The real trick the real trick is figuring out knowing your surprise recipient well enough agreed to get the right person agreed anyway. that would be lovely oh. let me think about it who i would like oh, i'll oh, even okay. maybe oh, i'll even oh, go okay. on to cameo and see who my options are but I, I oh i hadn't thought of it that way i guess there is a particular place it's a menu where all Ew. You get okay. to pick from a menu who you want to talk Super to you or your friend. Super losing its luster. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt so not that way. Yeah. Okay. No, that's exactly the way. That's Ew. the only way. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, no, but it's, if somebody it's like doesn't. going to Jimmy John's and getting a sandwich. It's all of a sudden not really. Mm. Okay. I like it is those. supposed to be I personalized like to you. animal cruelty sandwiches. They're so good. Why does everybody who's mean have the best fast food? All yeah. right. I know we have a big fat board to get to. So I'm going to shut it. Fat chance. I'm going to shut it and let you go. Um, I thought I became a more positive person. And yesterday <laughs> in the car, I don't know why that's funny. Oh, I, I'm, I've, that's not funny. Sorry. Maybe my, maybe <laughs> my lack of laugh. interacting with the world has <laughs> made me less angry at the world. Uh, but I was... Out yesterday, <laughs> and I passed. Hey, I'm less angry. I'm back with you. I'm super. You're not angry at all. You're wonderful. Hey, you do is right. <laughs> <laughs> I saw not one, not okay. two. I saw four. Maybe it was five. I couldn't tell from that last one if it was a screen. I saw five. Let's say five, okay? Because I'm angry. Sure, I'm with you. Math is my thing. Go. Here is the. Here are the people I hate. I saw five minivans, four minivans oh. and one sedan, who Ew. the back driver's side window yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. covered in little tiny stickers yes. because they put a kid in the back seat of their car with stickers and he stuck them, she stuck them, whatever, all over that window. Because this you don't vehicle, mean the stick figures that try to delineate, we no, are not a the, family unit. Those, no. those, you should ram into the back of those cars. This is no. something else. This is this is regular stickers, not decal window things on the inside. At four and a four minivans and a and a sedan what? yesterday. Where were you driving? Actually, Stuart was driving, so I got to look at all the cars. But 
Ew. These are parents who give their kids or whose kids have stickers. No. I won't let my kids eat in the car if it's not like if it's something that has seeds right. or well, whatever. Everybody knows you're a better parent and person than the rest of us. Well, but maybe we should just stop the podcast there. Far. Maybe we should <laughs> stop it there. <laughs> everybody I knows. sent you a trophy once, as I recall. <laughs> everybody knows that you're better than everyone. <laughs> Thank you for listening, dear listeners. If you'd like to interact with us, you can find us on all the socials at Listen Brilliant uh, or on Facebook at Brilliant Observations. Write us at brilliantobservations at gmail.com. Bye! If you'd like to if you'd like to rate Melissa five stars, you can send her a postcard with five crayon stars. Don't use stickers, gang. She's got a thing. The tiny stickers that say, you did it, or great. I don't know what they say because they are facing inside the car, but they cover, these kids cover the entire window with those little tiny stickers. And I guess Ugh. parents want their kid to shut up, but this vehicle needs to be safe. And when I turn around and look out a fucking window to see in my blind spot if there's a car there... And and there's Snoopy saying rats or what a day or or well done. I'm going to fucking kill someone because that whole window is I love, blocked. I what? love that your interest in in <laughs> the safety of the world is that this ill parented child could become a projectile that might hit you. No, That's I'm my yes. favorite. <laughs> I could get hurt because you can't parent your kid. And you say, can't drive properly because you allowed your child to climb around unrestrained in the back seat, <laughs> putting your stickers and your spooge all over the windows. And now we're both at risk. So fuck you and your minivan. I don't say don't have a don't have a tissue box in there. It could decapitate you. I don't care. I care that I saw so many windows covered with these tiny stickers that you can't see out there anymore. And I know that because I couldn't see in to see what kid was there or how old. It- really? You've given up as a parent where you're going to let. Plus, I-, I-, I guess it's on a minivan. And although I do love driving a minivan, I've never owned a minivan or never do I see myself. Flying. I'm just feeling so much better about not ever having gas or oil in my car. I really feel great because I never do the tissue box. You just glossed over that. You seriously could become a quadriplegic from having a tissue box in your car because the point of that fucking box flies right at your neck area, goes into the soft tissue of your neck area. I thought you were going to make fun of me for that. It's lights out meatball. No. I love my, lights out meatball. <laughs> that's what it is. It's not It's not good. That's no bueno in the automobile <laughs> category. That's what you call nope. Not happening. It's a hard noise. I'm telling you, I thought you were going after me <laughs> for the tissue No, box. I super support no tissue boxes. I saw boxes, the video. No cats, and I was no like, children. No fucking nothing up on the top of that no station children. wagon ledge. Don't put your stuff there, gang. That's why they have the gunnels and the little pockets and the press the button. And magically, there's a whole cavern where you can lose your stuff like hair ties and old French fries and bad cell phone batteries and all the things that you need in there. And never like a bottle opener or a flashlight or some shit you fucking need. Lighters. There's nothing in there that you want. Just old receipts tickets you but know. they're all restrained keychains like with keys that don't connect to anything all right that's I, getting too I, I, I got crazy I'm life. like why am I so angry this is the first time I've been angry and so lo- these are people I hate I'm like <gasps> podcast like, Yay, I, parent back. your fucking kids give them a squeaker give them a fucking tissue box for all I care I don't care if they knock you out I don't care if you're give them a squeaker <laughs> well if they're little that's kids that's a, they have a dog toy <laughs> No, 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 no. In my house, the gauge of whose toy it is, is by whose mouth it was in last. Oh. So if it was in a dog's mouth last, that's a dog toy. But if it was in a kid's mouth last, that's a kid toy. You're so And funny. if one end is in a kid's mouth and one end is in a dog's mouth, you walk away. They're working it out. <laughs> <Toss> <laughs> they're just, they're that's working it out. They'll figure it that's out. A, that's entertainment as far as I'm concerned. Let's watch. Um, can we do a medical update about your head and how you're doing? I know. I glossed over that because two things happened. So the good news is that there is no urgent news. I had the CT. I mentioned that the CTologist had, took pity on me, <laughs> as every human adult does, and many children and pets. So she, you know, cheated the thing and got the scan. She didn't say anything other than snap your finger, smile, walk down the hall when you leave. I have to understand and believe that these people 
have seen enough of these that if there's a giant red X with like a swirling black <laughs> vortex in the middle of my brain, See, they're going to have a different, they're going to have a different Reaction. facial expression. Say, why don't you just sit here so and you put didn't your shoes have your- on very slowly. So she didn't say anything. 24 hours go by. Nobody called me. Nobody said anything. It ended up in the my chart, which I have access to. And it basically gave me these results. They give you the results at the same time as the doctor. And it was, you know, negative for for whatever the hell we were looking for but it it just said it they didn't specifically say that they were looking for mastoiditis so the long and the short of it is I needed that scan to carry with me into the office of a specialist and the specialist appointment got moved so Ah. I still have not been so I've got to wait so the update is there's no real update, which means that's a positive development because yeah, right. I was really debilitated and now it's, I'm just officially going to get this stuff checked. And frankly, there's probably some underlying things like tinnitus and, and, you know, and all the other, you know, blank, 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 all the things that I probably have. So I'll let him deal with that stuff when it happens. I am now interested. Can I do an update? Yeah. Okay. You have to fucking update us on the beach house, you silent, silent Sam. Why have you been so quiet? It's either really bad news, gang, no, or my no, hope no, is that no. it's really good. I just try not to make, I just try to make my podcast not about me. That's all. <laughs> 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 okay, you ridiculous fuck. Um, uh, yeah, so that's where I was driving. That's where I was driving to New Jersey to pick out like oh flooring and, and tile and all that bathroom stuff. Oh. When I saw all those parents who can't fucking parent and just and they're sticker filled. Oh, minions. the fucking stickers! Someone's gonna die, and I'm I'm telling you, I'm reading the paper now, like thinking, and by paper I mean online, at looking for <laughs> local woman killed due to sticker window. Like it's going to happen, and when it does, I'm gonna make a T-shirt that says, be "Told you, be a better parent. I told you so. <laughs> told you, fuckers." <laughs> That's not stupid a great minivan. Yeah, so, told you fuckers. <laughs> it's not great. Why is, it's it, not why great. is that on a shirt? <laughs> Wait, told me what? Tap, told tap. you fuckers. Yeah. Tap tap. What does that mean? Uh, yeah. So we drove down and <laughs> tap, and we tap. looked at. They put pylons in, so they're kind of almost breaking ground, and they're. they're Wait a minute, Jesus! Holy, oh, slow the fuck. Okay. They're putting pylons in. They put pylons in. You bought a mountain of sand and are going to have worker crew come and build you a castle on the sand, literally? Literally. This is occurring? This is occurring. Are you inside a community of like fancy pants beach people? No. I'm on a street. So you just, Just you're on on a street. street. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's Jersey Shore. It's beach living. We're nine houses from sand and water. I just didn't think... That there were still open plots of houses left for anywhere. Very good point. What they did was that somebody had two plots. Somebody's family had it forever. And they knocked down their house and they're building two houses on that property. So that, so somebody right next door to us is building a very similar house to ours. And they're doing them simultaneously. So we're going to have a brand new neighbor. The whole neighborhood's going to have two new neighbors, but we're going to have a brand new neighbor who's at exactly the same point as we are building a house. So we stopped by to take a picture to say stage one kind of thing. It was those are fun. It yeah. was very anticlimactic because when you're there, it's really just mud because we had had rain for two days. So it's mud and these these little pylons sticking out. So they were just mapping it out, and yeah. So I I got really frustrated picking out tile the woman who was supposed to help me the realtor designer had her second covid shot so the next day she had a raging migraine so she couldn't oh. come help me so i think what i'm gonna do is Stuart and i picked out a couple of bathrooms two or three and the last one we're gonna have her do and surprise us because i don't give you're a fuck. crazy i don't yeah. care she's got great taste and i don't give a fuck the combination of the two is very dangerous that I'm going to do anything in this house. <laughs> it's very well, dangerous. Well, I do miss I do miss the tales of thick and veiny tile. So, um that was fun. We did go look at it and the guy said, "Well, this one Stuart behind me, I heard him say, this one looks pretty veiny." And I said, <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I, said, Don't do it. <laughs> I said, there's a lot of movement in this tile. And the guy's yeah. like, yes, there's movement. <laughs> like, Veiny. I, and he's yeah. like, can I tell him? I'm like, no, you can't tell him. Can I <laughs> tell him? 
you're not going to have a relationship with this guy. Do not Stuart. tell that story. Can you understand? Why does he want to have relationships with everyone? He's some some people just come into your life and leave again when they sell you tile, and you'll never know them. You don't need to know them. I think it's emergency room syndrome. Why? Because people come and go so he, quickly. You want to no? Because strangers come in, and then within five minutes, he's already got a finger up their ass, and he knows exactly what they ate seven weeks ago. Yeah, maybe that's, that's a lot it. of detail. That's a lot. That is a lot. He could tell you. They don't know anything about him other than the width of his fingers. I don't know what kind of emergency room visit this was for. But goodness, wash your I hands. I had the sniffles. I don't know why. <laughs> I told you, Stuart's story of there are only two reasons not to give a rectal during an emergency department visit. Only two reasons. One reason is that your physician does not have a finger. <laughs> oh, gross. And the second reason is the patient does not have an ass. <sighs> yeah, so that's our update on the house. It's barely coming together, but it, we wanted to get everything in and ordered early because there's such a lag due to COVID on resources and materials and, and timing. So the earlier we do it, the sooner we could sit back and say, why isn't it done yet? And even if you, even if that wasn't a factor, which it super clearly is, right. you never want to be the bottleneck. You never right. want to be Jaws. They never want them waiting on you. Just keep going. Get your part done earlier so that by the time they need it, it's sitting there waiting somehow. And also that gives you time to, it came in and it's wrong. And magically we have to order it again. Like all of these things. Which will inevitably. So you, the, you doing, doing your advance work way in advance is great. I'm just super sad. I didn't know any of this was going on. I love bathrooms. I love tile. I love picking out that stupid shit. I love decorating oh shit. Oh my God. I wish, I wish I you could have done it, it for me. I, I just, ha- I would love to. I just because I want, <clears throat> and you know, I'm building a house and I'm thinking about resale of the house, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. yes, I like this, but a, it isn't timeless, and B, who's going to fucking want a bathroom that has... I picked a super fun tile for one of the bathroom floors. Great. A fun tile. Can't do that in every bathroom, because then somebody's going to be like, oh, we're looking at house. Remember that, like, kitschy house? I guess we're going to have to redo a couple of the bathrooms, because they're so outdated. We right. looked at houses with pink toilets. Somebody thought that was a good idea once, you know, when they right, built that right, house. Right, 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 right. So it's like, it almost looks like a stenciled tile floor. It almost, it's so cool. It's four tiles that make up the full stencil. Yeah, you call that a tile rug, where the idea is the the tile itself almost works like you had a throw rug there. It's a a fantastic design. It was black and white with a hint of gray in it. It's so pretty. It's so, but is it timeless, classic? No. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. You think so? Yes, it is. Yes, I know it is. You are great. Everything you do is great, damn oh, it. Oh, I'm better than everybody else. I totally forgot I told for a you. Second. I got you that trophy. Along those lines, I made a deal with my kids. This year, we were talking at dinner. First of all, my son turns to the three of us and says, you know, normal people don't have family dinners, mom, dad, Mallory. We, normal people don't just sit down He's every so night fucking for stupid. family How dinners. How did you get all these scholarships? Can you kick him in know. the ankle <laughs> with your really sharp toe? God, and I dumb. said, wait, let's, and I grabbed Stuart's arm, who's like about to lunge, and I'm like, let's hear him out. <laughs> There's got to be something behind this, you know, let's uh, hear him out. Well, you know, people go out and they play sports and they work later and they don't have family dinners. It's just, you know, you grab something or there's food made and you just take, like people don't sit down for family dinners anymore. It's not a thing. Because he's mad that we have to wait till four people are at the table before we like dig in and somebody is inevitably getting water and somebody's starving <laughs> and the combination <laughs> of the two could incite a riot. So I, I basically at this dinner said, do you guys feel like this past year you've been given everything, your whole effort, or you've been half-assing some things? Like, <laughs> have you been half-assing? And they're like, yeah, I mean... I do the work that I have to do. I, I, I like they're just getting by. I have the last year was at home. They did not have school in the beginning. They went twice a week in a hybrid model, but then I thought once uh, holidays came and I was like, "Fuck that noise! You are home if you want to be." And they're like, "Can we please stay home?" Yes, hermits. Yes, TikTok nation. You can stay home. So I said, "I need us all to really commit starting." Let's say April 1st <laughs> yeah. to 
That's whole, a great date. <laughs> to whole assing it instead of half assing it. Let's give it our whole ass for one whole year. Let's try. Let's try. And that that means for my no, son. No, that's good. That's like that's like reverse uary or whatever the fuck I was trying to come up with to start my shit <laughs> yeah, over. That's right. Failed again. <laughs> failed again. Super surprise. No one surprised. Boop, boop, doop, doop, boop, doop, doop. Yep. I don't know. Fuck I can up. clearly see in this in this screen uh, that you're doing well. What are you talking about? No, well, I'm not. But thank you. I, it looks to me like you are. <laughs> I have to leave. I have to race out of here. And go pick up something and then drive out to a uh, big fancy college town and visit Boy. You know, top top of the rock. And, you know, hi, 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 don't hug, but maybe we can. But I don't want to mess it up because you've got a test next week. Of whatever keeps takes COVID tests every week. So, you know, I'm, I'm one shot in. I'm super one shot in. I'm, I'm feeling every single day. My second shot's coming up. So vaccinations have happened in our house. And anyway, but you were telling me, I don't want to derail from what you were telling me. So go back to the dinner. And also you're going to now on April 1st, the world's last fucking day. Well, that's you're going to restart everybody. And you're going to go from being open ass to whole ass. Half, from right? half ass, not open ass. Nobody open ass said. is what my was what my father used to say whenever the Dallas Cowboys would do like the stupid stupidest shit that they constantly do and then they end up winning anyway that's just so fucking open ass so what do you is basically i don't even know what it means other than i know exactly what it means which is god damn it you know and dick and you jerk that's what to me it means insert here i mean half ass well half ass is open ass is just just i don't even know how to describe it it's half ass with gusto i guess it's like it's like 1950s slang equivalent of yeet maybe Right. <laughs> okay. All right. I get that. I guess. I guess. I feel like that's. I and for the longest time, I thought yeet meant I'm doing great, and so I was using yeet in the totally yeah nice face. So I was super <laughs> using it wrong because whenever I would do something that was like yeah, I would insert yeet instead of like yay me. So I would do it all the time, and I'd do like all caps with an exclamation point, and my son would just lose his shit with is hilarity. Why is so he laughing at me? I, I have understand. kept. I have kept his spirits buoyant with my ignorance. April first. April first. April second. March ass. something. I want, I want you to pretend like you give a shit about things again, <laughs> and we're gonna go. Me too. Me too. I'm not gonna just do laundry. That's what I've been doing. Stuart's like, "What are we eating?" I'm like, "Oh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> My answer is has now become, and this is a new answer for me. I started saying, "I don't want to fucking cook for you people." That's my answer to what's for dinner. <laughs> Wow. I started saying this. And yeah. And That's I a lot said to it. unpack. First, let's go backwards. You people. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. your people. What are you talking oh, about? Fuck those sticker wielding minions. I've oh had my God, enough. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> restarted. Don't get me restarted. No, I don't buy them stickers. Are you kidding? <laughs> we can't afford stickers. <laughs> you people. If you want stickers, you need to steal those yourself. We are whole right. assing it for. But we're what are committing. you gonna? So you're. They've already gotten into their schools of choice. One, one so, has, one has, and I want him to whole ass it. I don't want him to. Well, uh, I guess I have a test I'll study. No, I want you to review what you did the, that day for forty five minutes, and then I want you to go out with your friends. But I want you to give school, pardon this weirdity, the old college try because. I need you to not wind up in my basement because you spent this year in my basement. You know, I need you not to wind up back where you were comfortable because you were really comfortable there for a full year. And nobody expects much of these kids. Oh, no, you don't have. This is a test free zone. This is a we dropped all of the subject tests, the essay test. You don't have to do that. Oh, wait, you didn't take the SATs. That's fine, too. Come stay with us. Come at our cushy school where yeah, because we'll the colleges you- are going to shut down if they don't get the tuition. Here's what I am speaking That's to true. your your troubled adult parent soul, right? Since you're 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 good at this, and it gives you anxiety when it looks like the rules have all shifted. In my case, I'm like, whew, thank fucking god, get rid of them fucking <laughs> tests, give me some stickers. All right, here's what you need to know. Oh, good god. The horrors of the past year have better prepared and equipped your top dope to go away to school than the opposite lifestyle, which you have required of him up to this point. He has been in the basement, left to his own devices. Learning to he print has, all figure of it your, hot. That's right. Figure your shit out. <laughs> Legal when tender. The only, 
when the only pressure and the author the responsibility for what you're doing the accountability for what you're doing is on your fucking shoulders it's all his yeah right true. the only thing that's going to happen now is he's going to have much easier access to drugs alcohol time wasting and oversleeping but frankly he's got access to all that shit now to a degree i mean we give him the alcohol but i have a feeling like once he gets high he's going to be like i get it I like this. This is See you enjoyable. Later, school. <laughs> I could do this full now I time. Know what I need to I do. I wonder if I could game while high. I wonder how I could. I wonder how taking a shit feels while high. I wonder how this feels while. Like I really feel like he'll be a scientist, but not in a good way. <laughs> like two things are two things are true, and many more than two. But two very important things are true. One is you will never take your mama meat hooks out of him ever, no matter how far away he gets, you'll just get those telescoping, you know, inspector gadget meat hooks. Yep. Sorry for telescoping you, child. Meat hooks. Yes. So you're going to be behind him while the weed is coming up to his mouth and you're going, are you sure you want to put that in your mouth? Because I can see you and I can also smell it. And did you wash your underpants today? Because somebody might see those. Yeah. So you're going to be there. More so, I think I'm going to say, I don't want you inhaling anything. It's really bad for your lungs. We're in a really bad seat. Can't you find some edibles? Like that's going to be me. Can't, can't you make yeah, butter out I mean, of that it's on your COVID crock pot? time? Well, eat your smoke. Yeah, it's COVID time. So that's going to happen. And then the other thing that's going to happen is he is going to look around and regulate and figure out what's going out going on on his own. I hope so. And he will rise to it. He hasn't fucked up this stuff yet. Don't make a face. I'm making a Don't face. Don't make a face. He got the presidential stupido, you know, Seal come on, of whatever, scholarship. Yes, sure. Right. So I want them to whole ass it. I want them. And they <laughs> gave me the audible eye roll. And that's, they're like, is that even a thing? I'm like, for the brilliance, it is. And Ethan started to make something like a, a protein drink or something. I'm like, are you giving that your whole ass? He's like, it's not April yet. I'm like, okay, that's have gross. ass it if you want. All right. That's fine. That's fine. He's into college. That's fine. How long do they have to whole ass? Is it just for a couple of months until school? No, out? I want a year and of then whole you can ass. Summer until Jesus. it becomes well. God, there's they're, too much fucking pressure with you. They're both going away. I think they're both going away to overnight camp this summer, where they went as campers for ten years. Right. They're now yeah, counselors yeah. there, and because of COVID, they are going into lockdown once they get there. Sure. Sure. So they yeah. won't have days off to come home. They won't have to get like home. I would say home cooking, but home takeout. Um, and <laughs> come on, let's be real. Uh, they won't have the opportunity Aww. to get a full day sleep like they would after being a camp for nights off. They don't have none of that. They'll be in lockdown. So fine. I I need to know that they're they're thinking of me when they whole ass whatever it is they do. Okay. All right. I don't know how I feel about this. I want it for me, but I'm not willing to do it for me. So I, I lament for your children who are forced into this hyper motivational scheme, you know, that you have working. But again, it's the motivation is a, a scheme. But again, the motivation has to be intrinsic. I can't give them motivation. They either do it or they don't. Right. Yeah. I don't feel like that's how it works in the brilliant house. I feel like this is your motivation. You've been told, and now <laughs> here comes the whip. All right, I feel I like a, that's it. I have a quiz for you. Do you have a piece of paper? Yes. To your listener, take out a piece of paper and a pen. Do you know what a pen is? All right, go to the notes section on your Look, phone. I can clicky dicky. Clicky dicky. Oh, you do that a lot today. Go to the notes section on your phone. Okay. What am I? I want you to myself. write down your favorite color. And then I'd like you to write down three words that describe that color. Your favorite color and three words that describe that color. God, I'm, I'm, Question I'm number two, you. write down your favorite animal and three words that describe that animal. Your favorite animal and three words that describe that animal. Clearly, my favorite animal is a dog. They are warm and loving and they are loyal as fuck. Those are those. That was my answer. Just letting you know. And the third question is, pretend you're one of the Wonder Twins and tell me your favorite form of water, be it a storm or be it the ocean, a lake, a shower, uh, whatever water form, form of a uh, bucket of ice, whatever your favorite water form is and three words to describe that water experience it's only three questions that's it 
I can't. It's so hard for me to do it. And here's why. So no, when you say no, the color, no, fuck. no, it's uh, zero I, thought. You put the reason is you think work. too much. <laughs> no, I don't. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I mean, OK, if that's what you think. <laughs> OK, ah! your favorite color, your favorite color. Is that's the hardest part. I couldn't I couldn't pick it. And so I picked a color. And then when you said write three words to describe it, I heard three more colors. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Dear listener. But I know that doesn't work. Dear I know listener. That work. Be, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Be I'll smarter than this. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Be more compliant. No, I love all so colors. So what's... Yes, Is that's there great. Is like all... Okay. Is Shut... Why are you looking at me like I'm Pick crazy? your favorite fucking color. All right. I'll go with the first one I put down, which I don't think is accurate. Oh. Should I do that? My God. All right, red. Okay. What, tell me three traits, three words that describe red. I put, uh, then I wrote yellow. I wrote orange, <laughs> I wrote pink. Yellow. Then I wrote blue. Then I wrote white. What I'm really looking for from you. All are right. Then I wrote words. fun. I wrote fun, cheerful, warm. That's what I wrote. Okay. And the, that's not the color. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Okay. Shut up. I love these quizzes with you. <laughs> and also, your friendship is so enlightening. Okay. I feel very supported so and you're, not judged. So your color is how you see yourself. <laughs> yellow and blue and white fun <laughs> i'm i'm fun cheerful and warm cheerful and warm okay okay so your animal is what animal lion a lion okay and what are the three words that describe the lion powerful beautiful soulful and that is how others see you powerful <laughs> yeah, I beautiful this quiz up. That's and soul right no you really <laughs> haven't so fucking wrong you really haven't <laughs> what's your f- <laughs> all right what's the next i can't wait to hear and the next one is my wop i guess what's the next one what's, okay go what's your form of water ocean the ocean and what are your yes. descriptive words the of three the-, the three part i put peaceful centered infinite and that is how you view love oh that's nice yeah so is the <laughs> so are the two that came before it yeah You have to tell us now. You have to tell us now. You have to tell us. Oh, I no, I did it. I did it as well. And I said my favorite color. So what's your favorite color, Melissa? So my favorite, I'll go right to my, yeah. So my favorite color was blue. And I said it was cool, calming, and beautiful. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's how you see you? I think in no way do I see myself as beautiful, but mm, okay. Then I told you my What's animal your favorite was favorite animal dog. We all know that. Right. So it was warm, loyal, loving, right. And that's how we see you. And that's how others see me. So we mm. see Melissa as warm, loyal, and loving. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Um, and then my water form was a shower. <laughs> Oh my God, it's, I love you. It's my favorite. It's my favorite <laughs> form of water. I can't, dear listener, I can't swim. Human controlled water. I can't swim. So why would I, what was I going to say? Uh, the ocean, death trap. <laughs> and wait. Yeah, yeah. Terror. Terror, death, and dying. <laughs> and well, that's how you see love. Terror, death, and dying. Like, uh, no. So I said a shower. I said it's renewing, relaxing, and calming. So that's. That's good. That's how That's I good. saw love. But I, I, I thought that was super love fun. love also is like hot, passionate, steamy, you know. Can be hot and steamy. Yeah, because showers can't be hot. Okay, showers fog can be up, steamy. Fog up the window. Yeah, I, I had that. Aww. Yes. So I thought that was like when you do it properly, not knowing, trying to fix the answers, you think, uh, all right, he said so. <laughs> So I thought that was fun. Dear listener, try that with somebody you know. And I don't even want to tell you that I found it on TikTok because Your I, TikToks are hilarious these days. And by that, okay. your, by your, I mean your curated TikTok. Yes. Your, your value of TikTok is that you actually watch it and then send people The TikToks. best of it. Yeah. They're very fun because that's what I love because now I don't have to go on that yes, fucking thing. Correct. That's why I do it for you because you were getting zip-topping. I was talking zip-topping. to my friend Jimmy. I was talking to my friend Jimmy just yesterday. And in a million years, I never would have known this. I was actually giving him shit, which he rightly deserves. But he was saying, I'm up, I'm down with all the stuff the kids do. I'm on Twitch. I'm doing this. I'm like, you're on Twitch? What does he do on Twitch? Just I don't watch? Know. Be, be stupid. Because we were saying he's got a lot of street cred with the teens, which he does. But he's also like 
cr-. and he goes, no, I'm just connected. I just pay attention to what they're doing. I'm like, I I have attention. I'm connected. I have he's kids. He's generous with them. No, he's the, he is he's a super spoiler. He will. He's very engaged. It's not like he just flies in, spoils, and leaves. But he's wouldn't very that be engaged. great? Yeah, that's not bad either. <laughs> but when it comes, he is the kind of thing. Did you ever watch that movie? Parenthood a thousand years ago with Steve Martin of course uh, big cast okay one of the things that stood out to me which has nothing to do with the movie I'm I'm just it's just a weird thing that always they had a birthday party scene and in the birthday party they were filling up like mixing bowls with M&M's to carry them out to the party they were filling up these bowls that you would normally use to make like a pasta salad for the neighborhood they were using those and they had multiple M&M vats that they were just casually you know and then carry that stuff outside and I was like I've never been to a party like that in my life oh my god like I was just looking at it and that's the kind of when I think of this sort of swoops in overbuys and leaves that's Jimmy right you don't nobody needs that many fucking M&Ms but Jesus I want to go to that party where they are and the kids they don't fucking deserve it. They don't but appreciate they it. it. I'll tell you they that. They don't. They don't. But they get it. So I just, anyway. Now I want Jim. M&M's. That's Jimmy. Yep. Anyway, uh, we were talking about these, the the quizzes that you have to take and TikTok. Does that relate to anything else? I'm trying to pull us back. So no, I, I'm on it. Time. I'm on it. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. So I don't know. This seems, this seems not great for, for a podcast, but do you have your phone anywhere near you? Yeah. Can you go to Instagram for me? I have it on McQuiet. Yeah, that's where it should be. There is an account on Instagram (coughs) that is siblings or dating. Have you ever heard of this site called siblings or dating? No, it sounds like a felony. That's disgusting. I am now obsessed and disgusted. You are not wrong with this site, siblings or dating. And I would like you to know, Ew. I have never, wait, I have never, ever gotten it right. Because These I assume. people are so creepy. I assume. You guys, okay, so wait, so wait, you guys, you guys, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. Okay. I assume they're so all dating. Instagram, and it says siblings are dating. It's all one word. And it says, trust your gut, JK. No. D- all right, I can't read anymore. Don't trust fucking, your gut. It's, it's fucking abbreviations. I want to slap this thing out of my own hand. Okay. They even have one where it says greatest hits. So those must be the ones where it's like really difficult. They have all these people and all of the people already look weird. And then you've got to look at them and try and figure out what are these weirdies doing with each other? Like what's their connection to each other? That one looks like a pirate. I got to tell you. This is gross. I got to tell you. hats. You it's think that they look alike and you say siblings and then you see and they're they're obviously dating because you're obviously wrong. There's a reason it's there. They're half naked and hugging or one one boy's hand is on the girl's ass. They're siblings. I've never, ever gotten it right. Even when I said, fine, fine, they're dating or I, I, when it's so clear, his tongue's down her throat. They're definitely dating. Nope, they're siblings. This is so gross. It is. That's like that time when Angelina Jolie and her brother made out with tongue, and she used to carry that vial of blood around her neck. That was Billy Bob Thornton's blood, though. That wasn't his. You're just gross, you guys. You're gross. Nonetheless, dear listener, go there now and tell me if you can get any of these right. I got them 100% of the time wrong, and I am obsessed with it because my answer is always... Then there are two girls, and I'm like, well, they don't look alike, so they're dating. And they're here's what I don't understand about you. Tongue and to I, tongue. I find it, I find it so, I don't know, provocative. Why are you drawn to the creepiest shit <laughs> all the time? Why and why do I like you? I don't get it. Because that's the kind of thing where I'm like. There's a there is a broken unit in her somewhere that needs to be swapped Duh. out. Duh. That's gross. No, no, a, a creep unit. That has nothing to do I am with obsessed. your parents' popcorn. That's disgusting. Because I watched that 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 super fat sisters. Did you? Uh, Thousand Town Sisters. I turned it on. I said I'm going to watch one of do my fucking homework. It's it's pretend you were and go. It is unwatchable. It's hard. Number one. It's hard. I could, didn't even know where to begin because even the little thumbnails that show you at the bottom, which one should you start with? They're all so creepy, you guys. And then I just, I said, I'll just go with the fucking last one because it's surely by that time they figured out how to do this show. The one that I chose, it's like everything is falling apart. This woman, the gigantic woman, first of all, 
680 pounds is how much she weighs now. 680. That's almost 700 pounds. I have to say it because I had no concept of what 600 plus pounds looks like. When you told me she weighed 600 plus pounds, I formed a picture in my mind that was probably half the size of what this woman is. That's how visually big I thought she was. That's after she gained it. weight. To, to Then I, then I saw it yeah. and I saw her. The, it is, it is difficult. It's unwatchable because it is as if they're saying, let's go into the ICU and talk to patients who probably aren't going to make it through the night and see what they're thinking about. Stuart like says that's that. what this show that's Stuart what the show that. is like. Yeah. And the the woman is struggling, she's not happy, she's making choices that make her situation worse, she's making choices that have no chance that are that are at least good choices but they have no chance of making the situation better. She's going through heartache, she's all of it. It's just awful. But even the little the little judgy things when you look at her face, the amount of extra flesh that she's carrying on her body it doesn't have anywhere else to go so her face is deformed her forehead is now extended over her brow line over where her eye sockets the bones are the forehead has too much fat on the forehead and it hangs over her eyes right so her eyes close like you can picture somebody with big cheeks and jowls and things that you know the, the places where fat likes to go on all of us and the more you put on, those places get bigger. That happened to her and then her body ran out of those normal places and it found strange new places like the forehead to pump up out the back of her head. There's when they do profile shots of her, the back of her head has a layer of extended fat so her skull is way bigger than a basketball. I, just to even visually picture that. I don't know how these producers have not gotten sued. Like, I just feel like it is an abuse. It was. I felt sick watching it. And I really was glad when the show was over because her brother is the only, the boyfriend, thank God, is already out of the picture because he. they showed a little bit of him and he is a total... It's you can't. It's, even call it's him hard a to watch. He's a grifter. He's a grifter. First of all, but the brother at least is saying things like bringing over chicken kebabs and saying you need to eat healthy. You need to do it. You, you frankly, he the one the show that I watched. He was saying to her, "You're at a point where you can't keep going in this house. We You're need to put die. you in a faci- put yeah. in a facility so somebody can help you." And then of course the very end of the show, she agreed to go into a facility. And the heartbreak is the one facility that they had in her state couldn't accommodate her because her she size. was already too large. So she's still trying to find somewhere else to go. But it's just everything about it. I mean, the woman doesn't have all her teeth. It's just, it's just, what are we doing? It, it's, it's, I, I think know. they pay it's her. A sociological sadness it when is. you look at it. It is. I think they pay her. Um, and I think they would pay for her surgery if she had a surgery. You met her sister. Her sister lost. Previously, her sister looked just like her. And she <laughs> delivered a baby. And they had to get in to section that baby. Like, the whole thing is very disturbing. Uh, but for some reason, I could not tear my eyes away. And I don't know what our obsession is with the the biggest, the best, the worst, the scariest. Like, they're all the superlatives that we're drawn to in a voyeuristic kind of fashion and it's it's really creepy Stuart's watching catfish again because a new season came out on Hulu what? he loves catfish and I My said husband. are you going yeah. to do this to someone because that's, that's what you're so that's gross. your mo you train the dogs once you see it like is this your next series is this what I should worry about I'm very upset by that well I don't know why people want to watch this stuff my husband is enthralled with a new racing series, not new, but the newest season of a racing series. I think it's called Drive to Survive, I think. I saw so that. A new one came is, out. I wonder whatever if he it is, was it's watching Formula it. One. It's, it's extremely well produced. It is super watchable. Even if you know nothing about the racing, it is very, very well done, and I, I recommend it. So I'm not going to go seek it out on my own, but the fact that it's on in the house and it's not, it's not competitive sports, I'm in. He called me out this morning. We record early in the morning, so he was already up watching it because a new show had dropped. He called me out this morning and said, you you really need to see this. It's man on fire. Now, we watch enough racing that we watched the event. I said, I hope it's not what I think it is. And he goes, oh, it is. And it's awful. And I'm like, I first of all, I won't watch it. So to catch you up, man on fire is this show's recap and 
I guess, telling the story of what we all saw live, which is when there was an accident and a driver caught on fire. Right. We, we saw that. I saw it with him live during the race when it happened. And it was traumatic and awful. And it worked out as good as it could. I think that the driver not only survived, but has like a good prognosis. But at the time, it was terrifying. Right. He himself was on fire. And in this show, Man on Fire, the way that they did this episode, he said it's even worse because... We remember what it was like when it happened, but here on the show, they just show it in real time, the two minutes and 42 seconds that he was burning, and they include all of the chatter and the screams and people crying in the pit and everybody on the heads, headphones talking. Which and what you didn't get when you saw Get there it. faster. No, they cut all that off right. and they cut it off. They're not going to show a man burning. So, I mean, we saw enough of it to know what was happening, but good. And frankly, I think it also takes a minute. It's like anything else. You don't know that an accident's going to happen. So people have to sort of catch up to the scene in progress. Why would I watch this, Catfish? Why would I watch? No, I'm not ever going to watch this. I hate that I had to even be aware that it happened. So that so the fact that he's, and he was not watching it in, in any kind of a, in any kind of an enthralling way. He was watching it just again to connect with, oh my gosh, this was so sad. And oh, so awful. And look, why? I've not watched the red wedding scene either. Why would I going to watch this? Why do why do people I can't I don't get well, that. Well, at least part that's of it. fiction. These are true. Like red wedding is it. fiction. All of it. It's to just... me the to me the emotional response is the same. But why? I can't that's that's how I felt. I felt beyond nauseated. I felt complicit in this woman's life when I was watching the the big fat so jumbos, whatever the show was called, the million pounds of me. That show was so and I also the sister's yeah. name is Amy. So I'm like, <laughs> great. <laughs> feels great I'm looking this is this is what happens when pretenduary goes in the wrong direction so I gotta close you, and it didn't motivate me to close the fridge because I was eating when I watched but it, it. had to make you it's, feel good about yourself though you're like <sighs> I used to watch spilt? the biggest loser from time to time and I would eat when I watched that show too so it's nothing nothing helps me I would like get I would make myself a meal and then turn on the tv what will I watch while I eat <laughs> that's, the biggest loser. that's a bad choice right there <laughs> Well, I wasn't necessarily eating like a tub of lard, but at the same time, it's like, shouldn't you? All right, we've gone on a tangent here. Um, I'm just saying. Speaking of tangent, do you have a limerick for me? It's so bad. When I was talking to my friend Jimmy, the whole thing happened thus. Yeah. We And you had mentioned that you require your children to join you for a meal, and your oldest somehow thinks that this is a strange new invention of yours. Yeah. And unique to your household, which that's laughable. So for lunch... Yesterday, I required the middle child to leave his sequestered area to come and join us for lunch, not just, you know, and then leave. <laughs> Take right? off your headphones. Like, no, like, no, the fact that you're all done doesn't matter. We're not done. I, we were, I think we were eating in stages and maybe he had the first, it was like grilled cheese and he had the first one up. So we're, you know, it takes a while for everybody to get whatever. I said, look, you got to stay here. Why? Why? What do I got to why? Why? Okay, so here's what I said. All right, fine. How long? Checking the phone. Checking the the watch. What time? What time? I said, okay, so here's what. You have to contribute nine things to this conversation, and then you can leave, right? And so he's like, why? That's a contribution. I said, no, questions like that that don't stimulate conversation. So then we had to debate it back and forth. So he was going, and we got up to about seven, and it was painful for all of us. And so I just was like, okay, I'm sort of done with Away this Away with you. <laughs> and he's been here longer than I thought I'd get him. So anyway... I don't know how it came up. Oh, I said you could stand up and orate your favorite poem for us. And he's like, what? So then we were, of course, laughing at how ridiculous that suggestion would be. I like and it. I said, you, I said, you could do a limerick. And he and his younger brother both said, what's a limerick at the same fucking time? And I'm half Irish, bitches. I said, are you kidding me? You're kidding. And Brian and I looked at each other. And before... Anything could stop us. Our mouths immediately both said there once was, was a man, a man from, from Nantucket. Nantucket. <laughs> we, and we said it at the same time in the same cadence as all adults do. And then we laughed and we were, <laughs> and I said, okay, so that's something fun. You can go look that up and it's gross, but whatever. And whatever, we were giggling and I'm like, don't really look it up, but you could look it up. What's a limerick? A limerick is like a haiku in the sense that it's a structured poem and on and on. So we'd had a little conversation and I was like, all right, away with you. So then Brian and I retreated to our room. We had to go get eyeglasses for me, and he was going to come and give me the old, yeah, those don't look awful. So we were brushing our teeth and talking. I said, "Did you? do you actually know the rest of that limerick? Hole in a boat? You could fuck it? Is that the one? 
Okay, so you, just because it's going to be super crude, I'm going I'm to say this. Okay, gang, if you are so unfortunate as to have delicate ears listening, you need to fast forward for the next two minutes, 31 seconds. Now, Melissa, you finish the limerick as you know it, apropos of nothing off the top of your head, extemporaneously <laughs> give us I don't know the it. limerick. Yeah. There once was a man from Nantucket. Oh, no, no, I don't know the whole thing. I just know there's a hole in his boat and he fucked it. <laughs> that's all, that's all Is I've that got. it? Okay. You don't no, know I think there's more. I just, I just, no, a limerick has to have more. I just don't know. A it. hole in his boat is the one you know. Yeah. Okay. So I know it full out and it's super crude. So hang on to your ass flaps. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's so bad. Whole it's, ass. It's Give it your I'm whole ass. I'm very embarrassed. I'm super embarrassed. I'm going to close my eyes when I say it. Go ahead. Because it's so gross. There once was a man from Nantucket whose dick was so long he could suck it. And he said with a grin as he wiped off his chin, <laughs> if my ear was a cunt, I would fuck it. So that is the limerick, and it's pretty fucking foul and raunchy. And that is not the I one said I know. it. <laughs> I said it to my husband while we were brushing our teeth, and he about put his hands <laughs> over his head, gift style, and ran out of the house screaming. Right? Because <laughs> he was like, and I was like, "What is it? Is it that I knew it, or that I said it, or that I said it here in the bathroom while we're brushing our teeth?" Or and here is what is so fucking funny. He took offense. At sucking your own knob. He couldn't get his brain around. He was like, who would ever think of that? I've never once thought of that. And if I had thought of it, I would never do it. And it bleh, And he was like making gagging noises. I think like every man has thought thing. of it. I'm like, not him. And also he disputes the fact that every man has thought of it. And I'm like, why? They do it in prison. He's like, no, they don't. And then he was just going on and on. And I'm like, but I've seen it in movies. And now we're back to the things that happen in movies that don't actually happen in prison. But later that same day, we ended up. At an outdoor, after the glasses, we walk to on the corner. They have an outdoor place with a beer beer garden and a food truck and all the rest. And you're outside. I'll pick the tables. Beautiful day. Dogs running around. Everything. So call our friend Jimmy and Michelle. Come on. Up they come. They sit on the other side of the picnic table. We're having a beer. Limerick talk arises. And I say, have you ever heard about a limerick? And he says, there once was a man from Nantucket. Go ahead. Whose dick it was long. He could suck it. And he said with a grin as he wiped off his chin, if my ear was a cunt, I would fuck it. And my husband, again with gift style, <laughs> ran away from the table. <laughs> and he said, and I quote, there's about a million ways to do that particular limerick. And I've never in a million years heard that one. And the fact that you two both know it in the same is super day. creepy <laughs> and gross. So how's a what's it? So I guess you're on Team Brian now because you've never heard. The only other one that I even heard that I don't know the rest of it is there once when a man from Nantucket who's dick, who carried his dick in a bucket. Like that is the, but then I, and you said he had a hole in his boat and he, like whatever. But I don't know how the rest of those go. But the other one I super I'm gonna know. I'm going to Google the shit gross. out of that limerick <laughs> as soon as we're I'm off pod. Like, well, I'm amazed that you don't have like loaded up on business cards in your wallet right now. Here's all the limerick versions of. <laughs> I don't know why that amazes you. I don't know what in our history together makes you think that limericks are my wheelhouse. But yeah, I, I don't. I, don't I th- feel like because it kind of goes with the watching of the destitute people and can't look away and also maybe like thumbs up porn. Like I just feel like they're all in the same dirty talky. I feel like they're in the same. I'm going to go search thumbs up porn now. <laughs> You're gross. You see. And like boys and sisters who maybe are doing it silently on Insta. Like all these things kind of suggest that you would know how the rest of this limerick goes. Clearly the siblings or dating <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is there for a reason. And I'm not the only one who thinks these siblings are fucking or wildly inappropriate. I don't know what to say to you. Okay. I heard two things yesterday that made me, me laugh out loud. I laughed <laughs> out loud. I'm waiting for you to drink <laughs> before I tell you. I laughed out loud. Well, the first one was I was watching uh, Bill Maher. Like I watch Ooh, his, he's tough. his show. Yeah, he's and, tough. But he said he read a – and I looked for it afterwards. And I didn't find it and then I fell asleep. But he, he read a, a study that said – in quarantine for the last year, single people on average, which means there's more and there's less, but there's more, masturbate three times a day. Who? I'm sorry. What? Ew. No. See, <laughs> now, <laughs> three times a day. If you're a single human who's working from okay, home. Who okay, Jeffrey pervert. What's his name again? Tubin. 
gross. Well, he was working That's from home. <laughs> even the name, even the name. And he's not single, by the way. He maybe he is Single now. people are masturbating three times a day. Wow. Pardon this phrase, but come again. <laughs> what? What did you say? Do they not have jobs? How does it? What's that? Was the that was the that was the stat? And I looked at my husband and is I that said, a "Stat as in like a statistic, or is that truly he just made this up for the purposes of his no?" He, he read an article, and now I'll have to see if I can find. He it. read an article in like Lonely Loser magazine. Even if it was, <laughs> somebody did research, <laughs> and somebody came up with that number, and it is disturbing. I'm all about the masturbation. I think it's great. I love it. Why wouldn't I? It's fantastic. Why wouldn't I? Three, three times a day? That's a lot of time. I That's don't like, like me that much. <laughs> breakfast, lunch, lunch, dinner. Or, or do they mean like, oh, I got enough time here. I could watch a sitcom or rub one, one out. Two, three. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of rapid fire. I don't know. I don't Ew. either. And if you're boy parts, then there's a lot of cleanup. Uh, and chafing. That's a lot of friction. All right. So that was was one. But my favorite one came when I was watching one of the, I think, Superstore. Did you ever watch that show? No. I don't, I don't watch any shows. No. It was, it's very cute. I think this is the end of it. I think this is the last season. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but somebody clogged a toilet intentionally and Ew. no, like with like shot glasses, like put stuff in a toilet to clog it. And the manager at this place said, what happened here? Why? Why? And, and they said, well, it was it, it was at Superstore. It was in the customer bathroom. And, you know, they just came here and they must have clogged it. And the manager said, really? With shot glasses and something else. And one of the characters who I fucking love said, you know, <laughs> Stuart was sleeping and I <laughs> you woke him with your I did raucous laughter. I laughed out loud she said you know things can come out of your butt that didn't start in your mouth <laughs> I thought, oh my god I love her so much and now I'm kind of sad with these kind of writers that this is ending but things can come out of your butt that didn't start in your mouth <laughs> that so. that it grows on you that one that's a way so homer I, I really liked it I really liked it and I wanted to share oh. it with you and I think it's what's over. the name of this show I don't know any of the, I don't Super even know Store. how you find these shows Superstore mm -hmm. okay Superstore. is that the one with America the Beautiful who wears yeah, the blue smock yeah but she's out she's she quit or she left she's doing must be doing something else because this last end of the se last season is without her but yeah oh yeah okay. and and we loved okay. her right we loved her when we marched in washington and she came up and spoke and she we love i her. love her i love i think she's great i from that first movie that she did where she was the young girl teenager who just left everything and walked down the streets of los angeles it was crazy it's hard on her. It's a very compelling character, and she played it super great. She well. is pretty great. Ugly Betty, she's remember, pretty great, too. I don't remember the movie. Yeah, I've never seen the episode of Me neither. Um, dear listener, I know I did our drops at the very beginning of the show when Amy told me I was the best person and nobody's as good as I am. She's got a trophy. But I do want you to know you really can communicate with us, and we really would love to hear from you. <laughs> there is a little dust-up going on right now on – on our page about flavors of uh, jelly beans. I think I really? trash talked you and people came out and said, I like this. So I appreciate you. Uh, there's a little bit of activity, not a dust up that makes it sound like a conflict, but a little. Yeah, activity. I thought there was a fight, fight, no. fight, fight, fight. There, jelly beans, throw them. Okay. There are no fights. Uh, Into my mouth. Get in my belly. Sorry. I'm very uh, excited. I'm going to Wegmans later today. Ooh, it's a pilgrimage. Oh, that's right. Yeah. The nearest Wegmans is only by my son's college. Are you getting more heading out there? dried peaches and pears? No, and I still have them because I never made what? the thing that I was going to make with them. Well, they're dried. They're fine. So they're eat them. They have been. I bought a lot. Oh. I didn't buy them for us to sit and snack on them. I bought them oh. as an ingredient, and then I never made the thing because I realized Because I'm not did. cooking for you people anymore. Yeah, yeah, I'm not fucking cooking for you people. So, no, it, <laughs> anyway, we don't, need to, we don't need to go into all that. But, yes, I am going to Wegmans, and I am hopeful, just from a non-Jewish standpoint, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm telling you because you might not know this, that Wegmans is the mecca of Easter Candy that I suspect it is. Never having been there at this time period, I am hopeful that I'm going to roll out of there with a cart filled with diabetes and I will spend will. my whole stimulus check, which I've yet to receive. 
I don't even know if we're getting one, but I, whatever. I'm going to overspend on chocolate and all the fantastic sugars. So we've been in quarantine so long. I use Instacart and my Instacart comes from Wegmans. We've been here so long so lucky. that the Russell Stover bunnies, which I oh, yeah. the milk chocolate bunnies, not even the ones with the crunch in it, just the plain milk chocolate, which sings to my soul. They went from available to what's wrong with you, bitch? Not available. And they just went from like grayed out to bright yellow and brown Bing. on my right. So I'm like, I think I need seven of these. I think I need but- Russell Stover is is bizarro world. They do probably more so here than they do in other parts of the universe. They do chocolate crosses, which is just makes me sad that I would want to eat the crucifix. So they have a chocolate cross that you can get instead of a bunny. And now they have a white chocolate unicorn, which looks really good. Even if you don't like white chocolate, I kind of want to support it because they've branched into other weird shapes, you know, myth-based deities. Where, I want some of that. Where does the unicorn fall in the Easter story? Because I could tell you it's not in the Passover story. I don't care. I feel like I just want to eat it. So, so couldn't it be all year round since it doesn't fall under? I didn't investigate. I went down that aisle by mistake and I thought I got to get out of here or I'm just going to take my arm and, you know, sweep all this shit right in the into cart. the checkout lane. So I was like, I got to get out. I got to get out. Oh, the unicorn. Get out. Get out. Get out. So now so you're bringing your sweeping arm with you because you're now I'm actively going to get well it, the whole idea is that son asked for snack so and paper towels so <laughs> I said well I can bring you snack and paper towels or we could drive over to Mecca and he's like oh Mecca Mecca so we're gonna go to Mecca 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 hi Mecca hi me ho Easter ho so he's I'm sure gonna put some nonsense in there and I because I only see him so often will say I'll do the Jimmy style yes check please so I don't know what's going to happen. You're going to give him a big fat bowl of M&Ms as big as your head. <laughs> I, didn't that scene stand out to you? Am I the only one? No, because we do that. We fill a bowl of M&Ms. A bowl or a mixing vat? A bowl. Yeah. This wasn't like the cereal bowl is now holding the cereal size bowl or the candy dish is now holding the candy. This was this was you would put in a wooden spoon and stir it with your whole arm. That was the size of the bowl of the M&Ms they were putting out at this party. Sounds good to me. I don't know. My point to you is this. That visual was excess. Emblema- was emblematic of parenthood that was so other to me and remains to this day. It just burned right into my sight. I was like, wow. Over the it top. Was like, it was like fucking stickers on the back of the minivan. You Ooh. created an entire picture for these people I hate those based people. on that one visual. That's what the M&Ms are for me. Okay, right. Tell everybody where they can not go on social. Um, to hell. <laughs> but where you can go. <laughs> but where you can go. Listen, brilliant. You can find us on Patreon if you'd like to support our growing legion of horrors. Uh, or you can follow me on Peloton. Just kidding. Um, don't do that. I don't need anybody else tracking my lack of fitness. Follow me on Hydro. And I, I guess to follow me, I'd have to be on it, which I'm not. Uh, listen Brilliant or on Facebook, Brilliant Observations. We're at Brill Ob Squad on there if you want to come into our elite group of jelly bean debaters. <laughs> we are master debaters. Uh, Amy told you she I is. Heard, I heard what you. I heard what you did there. I saw it three times a day. Thank you so much for listening, for downloading. Feel free to give us five stars. Uh, people say that. I'm assuming that you're supposed to do that, and I'm supposed to ask for it, but I haven't, and I think I should. So, if you subscribe wherever you do, why don't you rate us? Only if you're going to be kind, and if you're not, why are you listening? If you don't yeah, like, if us? you're if you're putting stickers or allowing your family to put stickers on the back of the minivan, let's talk please- about it. Please leave and don't comment on our show. Let's we talk about it. For you anyway. Are you ever and- turning that car in? Because you're fucked if you are. Gugon is not going to fix that. And you're going to hit me because you can't see out that window. Thank you for you riling so- me up right before signing off. We love you. Thank- thanks for listening. Yep. Bye. Bye.